Howdy everyone, P Daddy here. Today I wanted to share with you what I think is the best formation, the strongest custom tactics and instructions so at the end of the match you can be like, and that is the victory son. But before we begin, if you are new here, please make sure to subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. Now I have tested these out a ton. I've used them, modified them, and this is what I think is the best. It's what I use to finish Elite and Weekend League, what I use in Division One of Rivals, but let's just get right into it. Go over to my custom tactics. I stay in this formation basically 99% of the time. It is very rare for me to come out of it. But the best formation, in my opinion, is the 3-5-2. Now, I've seen a lot of hype videos recently preaching the qualities of the 5-3-2. I tested out the 5-3-2 a bunch. It just did not work for me. It seemed like, yeah, it was nice on attack, having a lot of midfielders getting forward. Sometimes it seemed like I'd get lost in defense. Sometimes the wingbacks didn't push forward quite as fast as I wanted. So I went to the 3-5-2, which is similar to the 5-3-2 or to the 5-2-1-2. One two, one two, one two, whatever that one is. With also with the cam, it's similar, but I think this one is vastly superior. So wanted to go over how I set it up. So three five two, defensive style. I like balanced. Now I've made a recent change to where I'm going to three width. I was playing this on four width. But I've found that when you have your left mids and right mids, and we'll explain the instructions here in a little bit, that they give you a little bit of that extra width. And so I'll also say you want to have a lot of pace on your back line. That's kind of been the new meta is playing your fullbacks as center backs. And so that's something that can help you out if you need a little bit more pace from your defenders. So kind of keep that in mind. If you can't afford some of the faster defenders out there, like a, a Varane or I'm playing with team of the year, Sergio Ramos, who's absolutely epic in that, in that role. But I really like the three width because ultimately it still comes down to where you want. To, if someone's going to score on you, they've got to come through the middle at some point. Now, you don't want to give up the wing, obviously, but that's what your left mid and right mid are going to try to defend against. So I've preferred it on three width. And honestly, sometimes I'm, if I come across someone who's playing a 4 1 2 1 2 narrow and they're not sending their fullbacks forward, I don't hesitate to put that down to one width. The other thing I think that does is it keeps my center backs just a little bit more compact so to protect against the through ball because, as you can see here, we are playing a pretty high defensive line. We are playing six depth. And that is mainly because we have so many people like in the midfield area. I want to just overload that area and just try to dominate that area of the pitch. Also, it has my center backs up a little forward. I feel like sometimes when people play this type of depth, it allows you to pass to the midfield. You can kind of sit there and think, gather your thoughts, and then you know make a pass to the wing or do a one-two pass if you're playing in a two-striker formation. It just gives your opponent too much time on the ball. But when you're playing on six depth, if they make that long driven pass you know say they win the ball back with their center back they pass to their striker at the midfield you've got a center back right on top of them that's either going to pressure them into a, a rushed pass or is going to take the ball right off of them so i really recommend this now it may take a little bit of getting used to but i always say it's better to push yourself it's better you know if you really want to get to a an elite stage of the game you, you really need to learn how to defend that way it's just going to make you a better player overall yeah maybe you can grind out a couple more wins you know maybe you go from gold three to gold two playing on one depth something like that but if you want to get and playing with the the top of the the at the top of the food chain in FIFA, then you're going to need to learn to defend this way. It's just going to make life a lot easier for you. Even if we later we change it down to four depth and play something like a 4-2-3-1 or something, it's still going to make you a better defender learning how to stop those attacks. Offensive style. I went back and forth from balance and long ball and fast build up, but I have found long ball is the best one. Now, we have some instructions that maybe kind of change some things around, but I think long ball is the best overall way to play. Now, you can trigger runs, but what I found out if you want to trigger runs, you press LB or L1 and point at your left stick with someone that you want to make a run. But sometimes when you're in that heat of the battle, when you've got so many people congested either near the box or at the midfield area, sometimes you just need that extra boost to get them to make that run for you. So I've really liked long ball as the custom tactic. For width, I've actually preferred four, and that's because I also want my left mid and right mid to get involved in attack a little bit, to be just a little bit more there. Now, they still offer plenty of width, still make great runs up the wing, but I just I prefer that a slightly more narrow to be able to get the left mid and right mid more involved. And we'll take a look at that when we look at the actual setup of the team here in just a second. 
Players in the box, I'd just have that on the balance of five. You could tinker with that some, but five has seemed to work out pretty well. Corners and free kicks, I recommend on any formation, just leave these on one. You don't want to get countered on a corner. And generally, if you're playing short, you're still going to be able to pass it to someone to keep possession. Or if you're trying to go from a direct corner, it doesn't matter if you've got one person in the box or 20 people in the box. You're aiming for the head of that one person and trying to get that goal. You just It's not worth it to risk giving up that easy goal to get countered. And that's part, it seems like that's the biggest part of FIFA 21 this year. Who can get the most easiest goals because we end up at stages in the game we're still running up against people playing that 4-2-3-1 one depth and so if you can get that one or two extra easy goals you know if you could average one easy goal per match it's just going to change your results uh, drastically so but but you can't concede those easy chances and that's one of the easiest ways if you've got this up on five if you got so many people up quick one-two pass if the opponent wins the ball back they're free and on goal so just leave that on one no matter what formation you're playing and free kick same thing on one now as far as how i have this set up you'll notice what i love the most about the 352 is notice that triangle at the top you're getting the benefits of say a 41212 narrow where you have that uh, the two strikers and the central cam but you're also getting the width from an LM and an RM. So it's kind of like a 4-1-2-1-2 wide where you've got the two strikers, the central cam, the left mid and right mid, but we also have two CDMs. So that's, I think, what just kind of helps you overload everything. And notice this kind of in the midfield. It's, like it says, 3-5-2. We've got five guys in the midfield. We've got Dybala as a left mid, Neymar as a central cam, Zambrata as a right mid, Bruno Guimaraes and Kulisevsky all in the midfield. So we're playing that higher depth. We just want to overload them in the midfield. If we give up the ball, we want one of our midfielders to kind of be in that area to win the ball back, maybe go back on a counterattack and get that easy goal that's going to help you. Now, as far as players to look for, what the, the way I play the 3-5-2, it's very taxing on my left mid and right mid. So I generally do need to sub off Dybala and Zambrata around the 70th minute mark, but I am asking asking a ton out of them. I'm asking them to make runs up the pitch. I'm asking them to come back on defense, make runs, come back, make runs, come back. So they are just exhausted around the 70th minute mark. So you will want to have somebody that you can bring on. I recommend having your right-footed player making runs up the right so that way they can either make crosses in, they can do that shot across goal. They're just I just prefer my right-footed player to be on the right this year and the ball on my left-footed player, I prefer him to be on the left. So if you've got a left-footed player you can put on the left, that is nice. So like even that a Stupinian card, if you've got Ferlin Mendy, if you've got Theo Hernandez, they would also be fine as a left mid. But generally you want a little bit of attacking because that left mid and right mid, you're going to get involved. You don't want to put like a Juan Basaka or something like that as a right mid because he just doesn't have much attacking to offer any attacking support. Now Juan Basaka would be great as a center back. I'm just saying you wouldn't want to put Juan Basaka as your right mid because you want someone that can really play both ways in that position. Now Dybala is not great at defending. But he doesn't need to be. The way I kind of envision this is my three at the back. And right there, I've got a Stupinian, Varane, and Sergio Ramos. Those are my three defenders. And then Bruno Guimaraes, my other CDM, is my fourth defender. So those are kind of the way I visualize it as my four center backs. So Bruno Guimaraes will still support attack a little bit, but I don't want him getting very forward. I want him to be able to come back. But also Dybala and Zambrata are going to come back. That gives me another defender. Kulisevsky is also structured as a CDM. So you just end up with a lot of overwhelming stuff you can do as a, in the defensive side of the ball. So, for example, if the ball is pushing forward and I give up the ball, then my Zambrata, my Bruno Guimaraes, my Kulisevsky, and my three center backs are all going to be on defense. So that's going to give me six defenders still, even if I give up the ball with the ball. So this is just one of the great things about this formation. You can just really overwhelm some opponents and as far as how you should set up your center backs the way I like to think of it you want your slowest defender as your central center back or kind of your rock defender now Varane is medium high work rates so I want my central center back to be back there just to protect the left protect the right protect anything else that maybe will get through 
On the left, I have a Stupinion because he is a left-footed player. So sometimes a Stupinion may drift out a little bit almost to a left-back position and make that pass up the wing to Dybala. Same thing with Sergio Ramos. You want your right-footed player on the right. So Sergio Ramos may drift to the right, make that pass up the wing to, to Zambrata. So you want your right-footed player at right center back, if, if possible. I mean, it's not the end of the world. They don't fully function like right backs, but there are times when you want to get back to them. Treat them kind of like a right back to where they can make that pass up the wing. But you so try to think of it that way. I would, if in this situation, I wouldn't want to switch a Stupinian and Sergio Ramos because I want them to have their strong foot to be able to make those passes up the wing. Also, a Stupinian and Sergio Ramos have high medium work rates, so they've got medium defensive work rates, but that means they kind of get up a little bit, but they're out there just ready to take advantage of things, ready to basically get the ball right back for me if we ever turn it over. So, I'm, And then they have the pace to make it up. So you want as much pace as possible on your center backs here. Again, like I mentioned, the meta right now is kind of for your fullbacks to play as center backs. So I highly recommend getting as much pace as possible. And you'll notice there, it's kind of a untraditional thing. I've got Kulosevsky as my other CDM. Again, like I mentioned, I look at this as my three center backs plus Bruno Guimaraes are my back four. So I can sacrifice someone like Kulosevsky. Now Kulosevsky is physical, so he still has, has a bit of an imposing presence, but he's more of an attacker. So I like having that. So you don't need, in my opinion, you don't need Bruno Guimaraes plus Conte. You don't need Vieira plus... Uh, plus Gattuso, you know, I'm just saying you don't need like pure CDM CDMs. You need one really great ball winner CDM. And then you can just have somebody that's more of an attacker in that other CDM role just to help you support the attack. But it is nice. Kulosevsky is physical, so he does offer a bit of an imposing presence on that. But get over to the instructions on my two strikers. I have them both on stay central get in behind and stay forward. Now the get in behind instruction is maybe overridden by the long ball, but I still prefer having it on get in behind because that's what we ultimately want. We want our back three, we want our midfielders or CDMs winning the ball back. We want our strikers making runs. We want to break out in a hurry. We want to try to get that easy goal. And again, like I said, if you can get those easy goals, that makes a huge difference in the game. You're gonna see a big difference in your results if you can start getting that one or two easy goals per match. So stay, f and I also want my two strikers on stay forward. So both the strikers are mirrored. Stay central, get in behind, and stay forward. I want my strikers up there. So if I win the ball back at center back, I'm looking to see, I'm looking at my radar. I'm looking to see if I can get that pass outlet out to my strikers. If not, this is what I think makes the 352 superior to some of the other ones, or superior to the 532. If you play the 51212, you've got something like that, or 521212, whatever it is. The one that's got the, the central cam. But Neymar as a central cam is going to help link that up. And the 5-3-2, you've just kind of got those three midfielders and you don't necessarily have a link up option, which is one problem I had with it. But having Neymar as my central cam as a link up option, if I win the ball back with Ramos, I can pass to Neymar who then can look for that pass to one of my strikers making a run. But as far as instructions go, I have Neymar on completely balanced. I want him to get forward. I want him to come back. I want him to do whatever he thinks he needs to do based on the game. So he seems to be back defensively when I need him. He's always involved in attack. He's making great passes. So you really want your playmaker playing in the central cam. You want your strikers to be pretty quick because we want those getting behind. We want those through balls. We want to be able to quickly get by our defenders and get those easy goals. For right mid and left mid, we have the same instructions. So Dabala, come back on defense because we want our left mid and right mid. Now what's also crazy, I, I feel in the 5-3-2 playing with wing backs, they do not get back on defense as well as the left mid and right mid, which is crazy to me, but it's just it seemed like the way that it worked out. Because it seems like on your wing backs, you kind of have to set them more on get forward for them to be be effective but they doesn't seem like they track back as well so having this come back on defense get in behind and get into the box for cross really gets the left mid and right mid going now again like i said it it really is physically taxing on them i ask a lot out of them i think zambrata is like 90 kim but zambrata is perfect for this role because he's a physical right back but he's also five star weak foot four star skill moves he offers me help in in attack but he also gives me a lot on defense as well so zambrata is amazing for that role i did test out like juan cuadrado jesus navas those both 
strength work really well. The Quadrado had pretty poor stamina. I want to say it was 78, something like that. The man of the match, Quadrado. So he was getting like tired even at the 60th minute. So you want to look, stamina is really important on your right mid and left mid. But you want to have something like a fullback, or I sometimes bring on Hungman's son. I sometimes bring on Alessandrini on this side. So you want to have somebody that you can bring on as a super sub for the left mid and right mid roles because they do get pretty tired. Neymar will also get pretty tired because he's getting an attack, coming back on defense. He's doing a lot of things, but I generally don't sub off Neymar. He just offers too much for me. On my ball winner CDM, I have him on cut passing lanes, stay back while attacking, and cover center. My two-way midfielder, or my more attacking CDM, I have him on balance and just cover center. So everything else is just on cover center. And then my, all of my center backs are on just stay back while attacking. And like I said, we're playing on six depths. So the idea is if they make this pass into the strikers, we are high enough up the pitch where we can win that ball back immediately. We're going to make our opponents work for stuff. Now, as far as defending and transition, I just want to point it out. You want to be careful with your center backs because remember, you can get exposed easily. So you don't want to control your center backs. Now, if they make that first pass out to the striker, well, what I'm saying, we're attacking. We have our chance. We give it up. Now our opponent has passed from defense to the midfield to their striker. We don't win it back immediately. Now is when we need to switch off of our center backs, switch to Bruno Guimaraes, switch to Kulisevsky, and start working people back into position because we want to get our defensive shape set up. Now, if you're used to playing with something like a 4-2-3-1, it kind of like the game automatically kind of sets that defensive shape, makes it hard to break down. This one, you kind of have to manually set it up yourself a little bit more to where you are working your CDMs back because Kulisevsky may be caught up near the box. You need to try to get him back. You want to try to get Guimaraes back. You want to try to get Dybala, Zambrata back. You want to try to get your shape back. So then your back three will start drifting back and absorbing that. So just work on manually keeping or manually working your line back so that you can get back in defensive shape. Once you're in defensive shape, I will say I think this 3-5-2 is as hard to break down even on six depth as a 4-2-3-1 on one depth. You just end up with so many people back. Neymar will come back. Dybala comes back. Zambrata comes back. So you, you, it ends up with a back five. Plus you have two CDMs. Plus you have Neymar defending. Now that's once, if someone's kind of passing around trying to get it set up, you end up, like it, like I said, it ends up just as hard to break down, in my opinion, as a 4-2-3-1 on one depth. Plus, as soon as you win the ball back, we are breaking out. Zambranch is breaking out. Zabal is breaking out. We've got Neymar linking up play. Kulosevsky's trying to get involved. Our two strikers are running out. So we are just on the ball. We are running out, trying to counter, trying to get things going. But it's just, it's a really nice formation. Leads to a lot of easy goals. Still can keep your shape defensively. You may have to put a little bit more manual work, but if you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe, check the description, join my Discord server, follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff. But I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye.